Okay, got our simulcast going. All right, I'm just gonna do the intro, Eli, and then I'll turn it over to you. Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Night Comics at Saw. We believe in comics, the sequential artist workshop. I'm Michael subbing for Tom tonight. I'm a volunteer here at Saw. We're a 501c3 nonprofit with online courses and also uh, courses at our brick and mortar location in Gainesville. You can find out more at learn.sawcomics.org. Coming soon, we got a whole bunch of classes uh, in the fall. And um, next week at Friday Night Comics, we have Amy Kurzweil, author of Artificial, um, Draw the Robot You Want See in the World. That sounds like a lot of fun. And some of our upcoming uh, courses include Bootlegger's Guide to Story with Jess uh, Rolofson. I don't know why I always panic before I say Rolofson. Uh, build Your Own Labyrinth with Matt Madden, Story Structure Basics with Beth Trembley, um, and uh, in Gainesville, in person, October 16th to 20th, Art Comics with Tommy Parrish. And you can find out more details about all of these courses and more at learn.sawcomics.org. We survive from tuitions and donations. If you donated tonight, thank you very much. Um, that helps pay the artists. And you can also support SAW at our PayPal or Patreon accounts. Also consider uh, being a sustaining member. It keeps us going and keeps our um, programs going. Also, um, share your work on social media. Everything you make here, we love seeing that with the hashtags uh, Friday Night Comics or at Comics Workshop. Join us for free anytime at the SAW member site, members.sawcomics.org. We're a school, we're a community, we're happening. If you haven't joined us yet, I hope you will check out what's going on. Please no inappropriate speech or imagery, no trolling, hate speech, explicit. Keep it PG-13, please. Sometimes we have kids here. And enjoy. Tonight, we have Eli Nixon, artist, puppeteer, storyteller, and creator of Blood Tide. You can find out more at Eli's website. I think I thought I put the, the, the address somewhere. But all you have to do is Google Eli Nixon, just like I did, and find out what's going on. And that's the end of that. Stop sharing. Where's the stop? I can never find the stop sharing button. Wait a minute. There it is. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Eli. You're you're muted. Oh, and you can't unmute yourself. All right, I know what to do. I have to ask you to unmute. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So hey, I'm so glad to be here with you all. Um, thanks for having me and um, honored to be in the mix and to spend at least what's here in Rhode Island on Narragansett land as a, a rainy, cozy night. I don't know what it's doing where you are, but um, thanks for joining me in my kitchen uh, to do some drawing for the next hour. So um, glad to be here. And I encourage you to take advantage of the chat. Um, at any point, if you have questions or you can't see or you can't hear me or you don't know what's going on, um, Michael's here to help us. And also, um, I will I will try and keep an eye on things. Um, yeah, we're fixing our hair. We're all fixing our hair. Um, if, if you have hair, if not, no worries. It's Friday night. Let your hair out. Um, anyway, I'm really glad to be here. Um, I'm going to do what they said to do in the beginning before I forget which is I'm going to um, just give you a little context for what I do, which is that I'm um, 
at this point in my life, a holiday proponent of this new holiday and homage to horseshoe crabs, which um, I wrote this book and illustrated it. And it has a lot of illustrations and directions for how to potentially hatch your own horseshoe crab or other organism holiday. It's not, it's both specific to horseshoe crabs and you can graft it onto any other more than human life form. Um, this is the, I'm going to shamelessly share the link for that book in the chat. Um, except that I don't seem to be able, oh, there we go. Well, there so if you're interested in learning more about blood tide. This is the name of the holiday in homage to horseshoe crabs, or, um, you just want to hear more about how to, how you might hatch your own holiday. Uh, that's a place to check it out. You can also just write to me anytime at 450 million years ago at gmail.com. And um, that's when horseshoe crabs came to town. It was around 450 million years ago. So that's my personal plug. Um, otherwise, I'm just here to spend the next chunk of time playing around in a zone of, um, I like to think about it as anthropomorphization for the sake of destabilizing anthropocentrism. Um, meaning that if anthropomorphization is the act of putting the eye inside of, oh, thanks for any props on the book. But if I, if, if anthropomorphization is the act of putting your, your own worldview, your lens, your eyeness inside of another form, whether it's a refrigerator or a lichen or a porpoise or whatever it is, um, and sort of assuming assuming human desires, needs, languages, methods of communication, ways of feeling are briefly grafted upon the more than human world, which is the term that we're using for for tonight, we'll use it to describe um, is, oh geez, sorry, I'm silencing all devices. <laughs> Apologies, geez, how unprofessional. Nobody calls you on Friday night normally. Um, so sorry about that. Um, I'm easily distracted and I'm going to attempt to have a laser-like vision on our experience here. Um, I, I'm still getting at the whole idea of this more than human world, though, while we can just share some terms in the beginning. By that, I'm referring to, and I realize that even just by the use of more than human world, we're creating a hierarchy as though humans are below something. I think it's just a brief shift in uh, perspective to because we're normally so, I'm we're, humans are the center of everything that, uh, to me, it's less about an investment in trying to put something above us and more about taking a break from being the center and saying, oh, more than us, like all of these things that are already here before we got here. There's also folks who refer to the more than human world with a more, um, you know, Dar Donna Haraway and other folks with a more uh, vigorous attachment to objects at large. Um, uh, that for the sake of this workshop, we're going to be focusing on plants, insects, mammals, uh, more than human world in the realm of the feathered, the rooted, the uh, organic of some kind. And so, um, yes, huge shout out to Donna Haraway. We wouldn't I wouldn't be here without a lot of her thinking. And but for the sake of just trying to draw some comics tonight in the next few minutes, um, we're going to stay a little bit simpler um and work on the the effort to just sit in the discomfort that might come up or the pleasure or the grappling that um may occur when we work with these forms which as comics drawers probably all of you are maybe already familiar with these old classics of that's not backwards for you is it i don't think so no um, no it's, it's, yeah, right great so there's the speech bubble the thought bubble and the caption. And um, those three devices in relationship with organisms that don't usually sp speak in the terms that we understand or that potentially don't use language the way that we do or that most certainly don't use English if they are using language. So um, any number of problems around 
what to do when you're putting speech and thought into more than human life forms. And we're not going to resolve any of those problems in the next 45 minutes, um, but we are going to bask in them together and feel the tensions that arise and some of the pleasures. So without further ado, um, I'm going to give you just a couple. I have a real weird relationship with time. That's part of my 450 million year primordial obsession is that uh, suddenly everything feels far more doable in that scope of time. It's the, I'm late to everything. I can't catch a deadline. It's the modern human urgent lens on things that I struggle with more. And therefore, as to be an effective facilitator, I'm still going to use this ridiculous construct of the clock and the minute and stuff. And we're going to do a lot of real quick warm-ups here where there's going to be super short timed things. And I apologize in advance for the abruptness and horribleness of the alarm, but it's the only way I know how to stop doing anything. Um, so we're going to do a lot of alarmed short draws. Hi, everybody that just got here. Glad you're here. Now's when you pull out your notebook and your markers or pens. I'm not working with color tonight. That's up to you if you want to do that. I um, am staying in the land of simplicity with marker or pen and paper, but I welcome you to use whatever materials make you feel at home and like you can express your curiosities. Um, for the first prompt, I'm, I'm going to give you one and a half minutes. I haven't started yet, don't worry. Um, it's very weird to be talking into the abyss too. So if, um, I'm here. feel free. I'm, I'm here, gonna here. grunt, I I'm gonna grunt at you. <laughs> Love it, great. Well. great, just let me know if I get off track or anything doesn't make sense. Um, this first prompt though, we're going rapid fire because you've all voluntarily come here. Oftentimes in workshops, I have to do a lot of like, it's not about skill. Don't worry if you're whatever. It's going to be super short. It's not about how great it looks. You don't have to share it at any point with anybody. Just whatever it takes to get your flow going. We're going to do one and a half minutes on four different quick prompts here. And first, I just want you to get fast and loose with the more than human world. And as a way into that, I'm going to ask you to draw a square or a rectangle, whatever kind of container you need on your page to draw within. This would be your frame of some kind. Um, I think sometimes it just helps to have any kind of thing to start with. And then you're, I'm going to set the time, timer right now. And I would like you to fill that block box that you have drawn with um, mammals. Draw some mammals. I would encourage you to think beyond humans. Yeah, yeah, I know humans are mammals. But try and throw a few others in there. You've started now. No speech bubbles, no thought bubbles yet. Just mammals. You're just thinking about mammals. For people who don't know what a mammal is, anything hairy, furry, feeds with the boobs, gives birth vaginally, doesn't have eggs, can't sting you, probably well, doesn't have- Wait eggs. a minute, what about the duck bill platypus? Don't they Oh, have... good point. Always, always good to bring up the platypus. Right, they get the I, whole- I think about them a lot, so. I think they're actually an echidna or, or, or whatever that other, that's not yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. It's some other category. And if you think you're done, think of one more mammal. Add them in there. If you don't know if it's a mammal, that's okay. Throw them in the mix. <laughs> it won't go on your permanent record if you get it wrong. No. Finishing up your mammals. They need toenails, do they need eyebrows, they have whiskers, their fangs. Great, that's the that's the thing that stops us. Um, now you're gonna draw their box. 
If a box that you just occupied was too small, make your next box bigger. If it felt giant, make your next box smaller. This is up to you, what you're doing here. And now in the next moment, and a minute and a half, we call it a moment and a half, um, you're going to focus on birds, avian life forms. Fill up a box with, just get fast and loose with some birds. Who are the birds that come to mind? Are they in trees? Are they at a picnic table? Are they eating each other? Are they nesting? Are they specific birds? Or just sort of bird in general? All right, finish up those birds. Great. Great. Now you're gonna draw another box. This is the this is the not enough time warm-up period of the night. So if you're feeling irritated that you're not finishing, that's exactly where you want to be. Um and we're gonna take another minute and a half, and this is when we're moving into insects, any kind of arachnid. You could put some arthropods in here. Anything that maybe has the creepy crawlies, the wings, the antennas. Here you go. Another minute and a half. What are these guys doing? Where are they? Are they sucking blood, nectar, pollen? What's going on? Can't think of any insects. Remember cockroaches, crickets, ticks, mosquitoes, spiders. There's so many. Praying mantis. Praying mantis. Yeah. One of those mustache bugs crawling around the ground, like a mustache on legs, whatever, house centipede, whatever they are. Spotted lanternfly. Oh, yes. All right, finish up those insects. Great. And now our last warm up is that we're moving into the land of plants and fungi. Make one more box here. And I'd like you to take a minute and a half and draw as many different kinds of plants, fungi. Who's coming to mind? Who's out there creeping up your gate or crawling around your sidewalk or in your garden? See some plant forms. Nobody's checking with a botany book. You can add thorns. Are there pistols and stamen flying all over the place? Who knows? You, you, you can add your flourish. I welcome slime molds, <laughs> liverworts, algaes. Fast and loose. Great. 
Great. Okay, shake it out, everybody, is when you release. That was the warm up. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for just plunging in. I hope that was okay for everybody. I, I took us through those four segregated panels, although of course none of those organisms would be able to live without the other ones that are supporting it. So our, our segregation between them is entirely artificial and uh, hope, hopefully that felt also sort of uncomfortable. Um, and then what we're gonna do now is, um, I mean, I think at the root of it for me is this cartoon, which granted has a human in it, but in my book, there's this cartoon, which is um, this weird hairy legged high heeled fringe clad person with the thought bubble embarrassment isn't as necessary for transformation. And I think that that to me feels true in that, um, Transformation is embarrassing and being between things is embarrassing and not knowing where to put yourself in relationship to your ideas or in how to express yourself through modes as clunky and complicated as drawing can um, evoke some embarrassment there. Like if we were to now ask everybody to hold up their stuff, there might be some embarrassment different people would feel about how their anteater doesn't look like an anteater or their fir fiddlehead fern is not fiddlehead fern enough like, or whatever the ways in which we might, um, you know, we might have hangups around rightness in terms of our representation of these things. And I guess I would just encourage us to lean into the embarrassment of um yeah fiddlehead um i i want us to lean into the embarrassment of the activity we're going to do now which is we're going to revisit in the same slapdash human hu like i just think of humans as this like bull in a china shop of the other organisms that we're going into our comics here now with mm -hmm. and i would just like to return to this um, very flawed uh, binary between thinking and saying. And um, I'm gonna ask you to look at your, uh, I guess, look at any of your panels, your four panels now that you've drawn of the mammals, uh, birds, insects, and plants for lack of a better word. Um, and I would like you to look at those things and I would like you to select two, just for the sake of this first exercise, select two. And that can be a bird and a plant or an armadillo and a fern or whatever, but you're going to just select two organisms that came out of this exercise that you'd like to draw again. But it should be from two different categories, right? Not two from the same. I mean, don't fight it. If you're like, I gotta have two ferns talking together, I'm not gonna give you a hard time. But like, I think it might be interesting to think about what happens if you are drawn to two different ones. And if you hate everything you draw, you can draw a new one, we're not gonna judge you. But what we want is two of your previously existing organisms or two organisms, and we want you to draw them now in an empty frame together. Nothing else, just those two critters. Are we, leave, are we leaving room? We're leaving room. Frame? Yeah, you okay. don't need to make a frame on this one. You can just draw it in a, in a blank page. Um, on a blank page, draw two organisms that hopefully you got sort of juiced up around in that last round of warmups. And you have a minute to do this. And you don't have to know why you're choosing those two. Don't don't try and get cerebral about it. Just follow your guts here. They don't have to live in the same environment or need the same things from their ecosystem. Or it's just like who's on the bus that day in your brain.
Okay, great. And now, now draw them, now change your page, or I don't know how big you're working in, but have another space where you draw those same two again with space around them. Same two creatures. I know you're like, why would I do it again? I just did it. And, but, I, but the whole point is that you're doing it again. You're just giving yourself a second round with more or less the same two sketched out. You know, we're work, working in silhouette here, not fine detail. Don't worry about shading, all that stuff. Nothing around, nothing around them, space around them. Space around both of them. Apologies for my lack of clarity. You're just trying to get two characters in the mix here and draw them twice. Great, and maybe maybe you need another, I'm trying to gauge based on how much of everybody's forehead I'm seeing. Um, maybe you need another minute. Maybe indicate when you feel as though you now have two drawings of these two critters that you could work on. Ooh, I can tell that everyone is far more detailed than I am. Good, lean into it. Do what you do. Okay, I'm starting to see more eyeballs. Looks like maybe everybody's ready. Wave your hands vigorously if you need more time. Okay, we're gonna run with it then. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do, and this is where it gets, I don't know, From I'm really actually interested once we start the sharing to talk about, yeah, sorry, I should have said at 7.45, we're gonna open the room and it will be more like you guys sharing anything you wanna share. We're gonna go back and forth and dialogue about anything you want. So if you have um, if you have questions that need addressing before then, by all means, put them in the chat. But after that, we can get into the complexities of maybe how you might be navigating this part, which I find quite tricky because now we're going into the, into the land of thinking or feeling, which is of course, you know, one of those sort of false binaries that's sometimes hard to tell what you think or what you feel or the difference between them. But for the sake of, you know, the harsh simplification that comics drawing sometimes requires and the pleasures that can come with that simplification, we're gonna um, we're gonna first learn, lean into thinking. And you're gonna take your first panel, like the first of these two drawings, Tell me if I'm not being clear, but you have one panel hopefully now that has two figures in it, two critters. And you're going to look at that panel. We're focusing just on that panel right now. And we're gonna do a brief timed exercise. Before you write anything, you're just going to try and feel something. And you're gonna look at this panel. And let's say you have a duck and a conch shell. And those are your two organisms sitting there. I'm gonna give you just a few seconds to think about like, what are they, if we were to focus on thinking slash feeling, um, and I guess this is where I'm gonna bring up this whole notion of first person. Um, Oftentimes we write from an eye or there's a comics um, angle around like, here's my story. And for the sake of this exercise, we are the eye that we are becoming is these organisms that you have drawn. And so I would like you to think from within them. So as the duck or as the conch shell, what do they think either independently or about each other? or this is the wild card about the environment you have yet to put them in. So we're gonna take 
two minutes. I hope this prompt is clear. This is a fast and loose thought bubble prompt. So by the end of this exercise, you should have two thought bubbles, each coming out of your two different critters that have a thought that each of these things is having and whether it's about each other or themselves or the world at large, that's up to you. And I'm gonna give you two minutes to figure out what those thoughts are, to draw a thought bubble and to then think about another thought and draw another thought bubble. And my hot tip around thought bubbles, this is maybe rudimentary from those of you who are more deep in the comics world, but draw your text first and then draw your bubble around it. Cause you're think your writing will never fit in your friggin' bubble. No matter how big you make the bubble, it somehow never fits. So write your words first, then put your bubble around it and draw and draw your cute little bubble, mini bubbles, attaching it to whoever's head you think it's coming out of. If your thing doesn't have a head, that's another great exercise. Does a fern think of out of its roots or does it think out of its tufts? Does it think out of its swirly part at the very top? This is all, these are all decisions you get to make as the grand human in charge of your panel. If you don't know what's going on, just ask me in the chat. But remember, we are restricting ourselves to the land of thinking. These things are not saying anything yet. Great. Now, for those of you who need this kind of thing, I'm one of these people. If you hate what the thing thought or you disagree with it or you're embarrassed by it or you're like, oh, why is it thinking that? Or I don't want it to think that. Or how superficial armadillos must be having much deeper thoughts than that. Or whatever judgment your human lens might be putting on this organism. This is a time when you get to cross out whatever you thought they thought and write a different thought. This is just your quickie tra trap door. If you hate the first thought, you get to go, this is your moment. You can cross it out. You, you can augment the thought. You can make a sub thought under that thought that makes the thought more interesting to you. Maybe the first thought triggered a new thought that the second organism needed to have in relationship to the first thought. This is when you alter your, you can alter your thought bubble. Great. Now I realize there's not never enough time for any of this, but we're just going to keep going. And hopefully this gives you seeds to muse on later, all night long, tomorrow, whatever you want to do in the future. But for now, for the sake of this moment, uh oh, everybody's frozen. Can you still hear me? We can still hear you. You, you Your video is uh, intermittently oh, freezing. And now I can't hear you either. Uh-oh. Oh, there you are. I heard the uh-oh. It looks like you're back now. Oh, you can't. Yeah. I oh. <laughs> oh, dear. OK. Let's give you a a few minutes to hopefully come back.
because we have no plan B. It's on to uncover. What happens if the guest artist disappears in the middle? <laughs> There's a bird behind me. Is there? Oh, they're back, but can't unmute. We're uh, hidden it. Um, Eli, if you can raise your hand, you will pop to the top and I can find you. Um, you know how to raise your hand or I can just keep looking for you. Um, no, it'd be much easier if you can raise your virtual, yeah, your emoji. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. No worries. Whew, technical difficulties. I was raising, I was raising all of my both my robotic and human hands, my mammalian hands, my arachnid hands. They were all up. Um, sorry about that, everyone. You got an extra couple of bonus seconds. Um and looks like you're done talking, so we're going to lower your hand. I don't know, understand Zoom world, but you tell me if, can you still hear me? Everything's okay? Yeah, yeah, everything's okay. You could keep your hand up because that will keep you at the top, and that's that helps me. Yeah, I didn't choose to lower it. It automatically oh, yeah. lowered it me. I was done talking. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Um, anyway, moving on from the world of zoom hijinks um let's let's just briefly uh i'm i guess what i would like to put a bookmark in this feeling that you might have had about putting feelings inside inside of these organisms i'm curious later on if we can reflect on that moment but we're going to briefly cleave ourselves like you know the first in, enlightened man or whatever, and uh, pretend that our thoughts and our feelings and what we say are um, not all sort of linked in a weird basket of realities. And instead, <laughs> now moving on to your second panel of organisms, you don't have to, this is a choice. You could either write on top of what you felt or you could move on to your new panel, which is what I suggest for the sake of just clarity in a confusing world. Um, move to your other two new organisms that hopefully don't have any thought bubbles around them. And we're gonna focus on saying something. So this is where you would sit, look at your two organisms. Now you know what they think or one of the things that they think, what do they say? And do you write that in English? Do you write that in some other language you speak? Do you write that in a language no one yet speaks that is horseshoe crab symbols? Or this is where you decide what goes in these speech bubbles. Thanks for supporting the Donna Haraway love in the chat, everybody. Um, yes, we should all celebrate her work. So we're just taking a quick minute to think about what are they saying? Are we thinking or doing? Should we pause before we oh, do? Oh, sorry. No, you're doing. You're just okay. going ahead and doing it because I awesome. suddenly am feeling a real awareness of the shortage of our time. Granted, I'm not in a big hurry or anything. We can go over to, you know, go over to whatever we need, but I... Uh, I think it would be good to move into saying. Again, write what they say before you write that snazzy little bubble around it. Then you can make your bubble actually line up with what they say. You know, I need a better sounding timer. We can't hear the timer because of the Zoom settings, so. Um, you can't hear it? 
No, it the default is we don't hear ambient sounds. It filters it out. Oh wow, but, wild! All right, well then I'll just go ding or something. You haven't yeah, been hearing no. it all the time. No. Oh, all right, ding! I'm dinging. Um, I realize that wasn't <laughs> enough time to think about what they say. We're just cruising on. And um, if you're at this point, I see people like rubbing their eyes and looking sort of um, overwhelmed. And I that's I think a very useful part of this exercise like that that is the ideal state to be moving into i think for um trying to sort of dig into the complexities around putting ourselves inside of these other organisms and who are we to know what they say like the presumptive the sort of presumption of authorship from within another like there's so many questions about representation and um and you know, whose voice or priorities or values or any of that gets to come through this form uh, does a lot of um, reflecting back on you as a maker, right? Like as it, it suddenly says a lot about who you are in your deep humanity. Um, not that this is everything there is to know, but I, I just find myself in dialogue with weird parts of myself when I do this exercise. Um, so now this is when we move into like, uh... <laughs> no, a mushroom is a great thing to choose because mushrooms have so many different ways of communicating. Someone wrote in the chat, that if they were going to have two organisms thinking and talking, they would not have chosen a mushroom. But I would say that I actually think mushrooms are one of those things that have been proven by so many different forces of having a huge amount of communication between them. There's a whole under underground webs and deep mycelial networks. And yes, mushrooms, mushrooms, loving all oh, the mushroom love in the chat. We can do a whole night on fungal illustration. Oh my God, love it. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, this is where I'm gonna ask you to draw three panels. We're just moving real fast and loose into now you're gonna make a three panel thing. You know you know what I mean? God, I'm lo I've lo lost my verbal skills, but for lack of a better, this is too small, but for the sake of illustrating what I mean, you're making three panels. And this is another fast and loose effort for you. Um, you know, you guys all might have internal comic speak that I don't know. I'm just sort of like a hack illustrator. Tom just invited me here. I have no comics cred at all. So there may be terms I'm using that are completely wrong and I'm off chart. I'm out of my lane here. I'm just a weird interloper who's excited about drawing sort of haphazardly. So I don't know exactly what you mean by a sequence, but I'm talking one, two, three, because, because it feels... Um, it feels doable in the tiny amount of time that we have. And there's some amount of arc. These could be three different things, but for the sake of thinking and drawing within the modern human world or the more than human world, sorry, not the, you know, we are the modern humans in the more than human world. Sorry, let's take a breath here. And for the sake of clarity around your three panels that you're going to draw, I would like you to gaze back over your initial four panels of the species that you rooted around in. Just go back to those four. See if anybody catches your eye that you haven't gotten to play with. Like, was there a crab that you drew in one of those that was tickling you or was there daffodil or is there somebody in there that you want to work some more with? Or this is your chance to say like, oh crap, I totally forgot about elephants or um rattlesnakes or whatever might be your jam and this is where you're going to take a few deep breaths and on a scrap paper not your three panels but on a empty sheet there you can just screw around you're gonna draw you're gonna identify who is your lead for these three comics you know this doesn't have to be your soulmate I've wed myself forever to horseshoe crabs but I'm also deeply in love with sloths I have a deep orgasmic relationship with lichen there you can have a a multitude of love affairs but for the evening right now we're going to hone in on one you just played with two 
you've explored some thoughts and feelings, but either from your four panels of possibility or from your untapped imagination thus far, you're going to choose who's your who's your comic state for the next 10 minutes or so. Well, or, or maybe like shorter than that, because we usually start sharing around now. OK, great. So for your next four minutes, who's your <laughs> comic state? And you're just going to choose one of those guys. You're going to draw it in there, your blank area just to like get fast and loose. What's the outline of this thing? Commit yourself to something. Is it a pelican? Is it a horse? Who knows? And now you're going to write, um, you're going to write your, or sorry, draw your organism in the first panel. Place your organism somewhere in the first panel. <laughs> yeah, I'm tapped in people. I have a lot of organism, organismic telepathy or whatever going on. <laughs> And then for the sake of fast and loose, I would like to draw, like you to draw your character again. This is your character now, your organism. You need to draw your character again in the second panel in a different position. Something has changed. Is it in a chair? Is it up in a tree? Is it giving birth? What is it doing? And then you may have guessed it. If you finish that, you're gonna go on to your third panel and you're still not using speech bubbles or thought bubbles at this point, you're just drawing your character. It's gonna change one more time. Give it one more change. Is it almost all the way off the panel? Is it crawling up the other side of the panel? Is somebody chopping it in half? Has another organism came and eaten it? third panel with that character and one more change. Is it missing legs? Did it grow new legs? Great, and now that you've got the very quickest sketch of your critter of the evening in three different positions, this is where you're gonna add your special sauce and then we'll open it up to sharing or questions or whatever anybody wants to talk about. But this last part is where you insert the speech bubble or thought bubble that is needed it might be in every panel. It might be in just the last panel. Maybe it only thinks. Maybe there's another organism that needs to come in and say something to it that makes it think. This is where the special sauce of your imagination is up to you. I see that Marlene has a question, but I don't think I, I don't have the power to unmute you, Marlene. I think, uh, all right, I can, I do have that power. I just unmuted Marlene. Uh, yeah, hi, Eli. I have a lot of trouble with my computer um, connecting, uh, but that's an Australian thing. We are the worst um, country to have connection with the world. Just saying. I've been well, in and out all the time. Thank you. Well, we're glad you're here. Hopefully you're getting some takeaway from it. I um, am. And you've got so many great organisms there in Australia with your platypi and your koalas and your other cool venomous life forms. 
I'm still seeing a lot of foreheads. So I think I am going to just throw in one wild card here for anyone that might be like, okay, I'm with you. I'm done. I'm done. Do you need um, captions? That's the other thing. You know, then the caption is such a, you know, it's such a power move, right? In a comic to suddenly decide that not only do you get to make things think and say things, but you could also just decide, oh, sorry, Medha, I'm answering your question. You're you're doing a thought bubble or a speech, but you're just doing what you need. Do your organisms need to think? at each other, around each other? Does your organism need to, to speak? This is where it gets a little fast and loose because one, we're running out of time. And two, um, I'm, I'm just prompting you to get uncomfortable with the whole notion of having any idea what an anteater might say to the daffodil or vice versa. But I think it's useful for us to muse upon all of this. Yes, get a pop of blue, get whatever you need. And now I think, um, Michael, I feel great about you opening it up to the world and us taking whatever time we need for people to ask questions or show what they've got or share their struggles or vent their frustrations or whatever they need well, to do. All right, I'm going to take you off the, uh, there you are. Also, I should have made you close from the beginning. Um, yeah, so start raising your Zoom hand and we'll do our best, even though Zoom seems to want to um, forcibly lower people's hands at in our inopportune times. And we'll just go around and share. Marlene, your hand is still up. Does that mean you want to share or is that your hand still up from earlier? I'm going to guess it was up from earlier. Yeah, uh, I, I'm ready. And you are you able to come on camera with your computer problems? Uh, well, I'll try. I if it cuts off, it cuts off. It's not up to me, unfortunately. That's true. Yeah. So something's happening. Uh, let's see. There Can you, you are. Yeah, yeah, we see you. Okay, so I did what I could. You're probably going to need to turn off your background, though, for us to see the drawing. Or you could just maybe hold it closer to the screen. There it there is. You. Bingo. Wow, look at how fast you work. Jeez. Yeah, well, I used the time in between. It was like 25 minutes I was out. But anyway, my, my the title of my story is An Underwater Conversation Between Arthropods uh in general and i did read up a bit about the um horseshoe crab yes <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing it's ancient and uh very important to us human beings and so the first one over here is one of them and she is saying hey mort although humans have red blood cells in their blood they are not toughies. We have pathogens that kill all bugs. And it's true. They've got blood, blue blood, that uh, scientists use as vaccines against bacteria to keep us safe. So they, she's having a conversation with this one, and they've got eye contact, as you can see. And then the next arthropod is a crab, hermit crab, saying, Ah, but you think of yourselves as blue-blooded, but I can pinch you and kill you, actually. So there's a bit of retort and a bit of acrimony between them. Then I went to uh, the very innocent one again, and I'm frozen now, so I'll just explain. Uh, she says, oh, maybe you can see it, um, well, as a horseshoe crab, my blue blood is worth its weight in gold. And then lastly, another crab says, rolling her eyes, 
you guys quiet. Plotting is good only for some people. And I hope you heard that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, Berlin. That's awesome. Um, I just want to raise the um, raise the roof for uh, taking the plunge into into making a whole conversation occur, and also just for the sake of the horseshoe grab survival, I would like to alert everyone to the news that synthetic alternatives to horseshoe crab blood exist and have been approved in other countries. And we're still working on the biopharmaceutical industry in the United States to move into using synthetics instead of horseshoe crabs, um, which we have not yet done and we may make them extinct before we do. So just hot, hot truth about um, our complicated relationship with extracting blood from things. Thank you, Eli, for the opportunity. Oh, yeah. Thanks for your sharing. You want to go, Parker, and share? Yeah, what I see you... Parker, Aaron, and Ellen. Uh, Love it. Someone else can go first, actually. I'm just really quickly um, doing it over in pen so you can actually see it. So you can come back to me. How about Aaron? We can get Aaron on camera. Hey, Aaron. Uh, Hi. Thank you. This, this was great fun. Uh, I'll just. This was the, the first drawing with the thought bubbles. <laughs> and then the second one with the speech. Yeah. Whoa, look at that mushroom and ladybug language. Love it. And then the three panel sequence ended up like this. Yeah, trippy. Cool. Look at that that mushroom caption underneath. Far out. Cool. It was great fun. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. thanks for taking the plunge. Thanks, Aaron. I see Alan next. Yeah, so I, I usually do mine on the computer. I don't know if I can share my screen. Um, let's see if I can try it now. Is there any way, it, can you enable screen sharing? Or if not, I can hold my tablet up and it'll look kind of weird. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, could you hold it up? I think if you tilt it, we can probably see it. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. so uh, I'll scroll through these first panels. It's hard to... Yeah, hard for me to see what's going on here. Hold on. Oh, no, that's right. great. I see. I see all sorts of things, and I totally forgot to even call out the giraffe. Here we go. I'm trying to scroll through here. It's kind of hard because I can't. Trying to see what I'm doing here. There are my first panels with the plants and the birch. And so I decided to go with because I I didn't know we'd make them think or talk with a uh, oops. Yeah. Mushroom and a mantis. So. Uh, it's kind of hard to can I zoom out a little, uh, not easily, unfortunately, because that's probably holding it up here. Uh, so let's see, what is the mantis saying here? Oh, from from this high vantage point, I can see my I can see my prey from feet away. The mushrooms. Yes, uh, this would probably tickle if I were ticklish. Wait, am I ticklish? Maybe I don't actually know what tickling is. I, I didn't know what to make a mushroom think. Uh, so in the next one. Ah, I feel like a great weight has been lifted from me. Yeah, I am pretty great, aren't I? Um, <laughs> the comic, I decided to go with a different animal, with a kiwi. Which, can you actually see this? looks really blurry. I don't know if that's just me. I'm sorry. No, no that's, my screen, that's but, oh, great. That looks great. So the kiwi's uh, first, you know, Wee, I love running. I feel sorry for birds that can't run. No, sir, there's nothing like running except for jump, except maybe jumping. But napping is best of all. Sure would be sad to be a bird that can't nap. I figure kiwis, of course, being famous for bird, being birds that can't fly, I figured this kiwi could focus on what it can do. So, <laughs> um, so that was. Thanks, Alan. So there was my. Anyway. Cool. So good to see. So fast. Uh, Cam is off camera, so let's go to Meta. Oh, wait, Cam's coming on. I uh, enjoyed it uh, as usual. Uh, it's quite late, so. Uh, where is it? Yeah, we can see that. That's great. 
So I chose a pig and pigeon because they share pig in the name. And <laughs> I tried to censor in case there were kids, <laughs> but basically the pigeon says, um, oh no, I ate too much. But um, wait, but the bread is so awesomely tasty. And then the pig says, yeah, I ate too much and it's happy with life. And then um, the next panel, the next comic is, you know what? They, they're kind of lying to each other. You know what? I've been too into fitness lately. Oh yeah, me too, totally. And the last one I kind of drew twice. It's again about eating, but this time the mushroom is basically eating everything in the world. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great. Love it. Doesn't it make you when they're suddenly in the position of needing to decide of all the things they could care about? Like, even when you think about a pig trying to understand what too much is, it suddenly puts us in relationship with all of the like questions around human judgment about muchness or any like any. I just love the way it makes us hyperhuman in a complex way to try and assume this role inside of the thoughts and speech of these other critters. Uh, should we go back to Parker? Um, yeah, Parker, are you ready now? You're still muted though. Uh, I think I sent you the unmute request. Do you see that, Parker? There we are. There we go. Okay, it didn't go through the first time for some reason, but so just see if I can get that. There. Oh, it's going to be reverse, isn't it? No, it's great. Oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, I did a giraffe, and as I was doing the giraffe, I realized that they were my favorite animal as a kid, and I kind of haven't thought about them in a while. So it came out a little, a little sad, a little somber, but it's this giraffe that's asking me why I forgot about it, but it's not, it's not mad at me about it. It's just being a little confrontational. So. Nice. Cool. Thanks for sharing. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, Meta next. Hi. So I went with a pelican. Um, and it's based on a saying, uh, I don't know if everyone's heard it before, a, a pelican's beak can hold more than its belly can. Yeah. So, so the first one says, they say a pelican's beak holds more than its belly can. And then he says, but I found a hack. If I eat a lot, I can make my belly bigger. Problem solved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I see Andrew and then Nikki and then Rob, which gives you a couple of minutes to get your camera on, Rob. And did that happen again? I sent there you. There we go. There it is. I'm good, brother. Took me a minute. Sorry. Uh, okay. There. So I had um, a Venus flytrap, sort of, and yes. uh, a caterpillar and a spider waiting for the bus. And so the uh, caterpillar is quite well-dressed evening wear, and he's quite upset uh, that the uh, Venus flytrap is not properly dressed. So he's saying, how gauche? And then the uh, flytrap, of course, is saying, oh, good lunch. And meanwhile, the spider is saying, oh my, I can't wait for the bus. So that's basically it. And then my <laughs> only other thought was that the um, flytrap might try and sing, you know, come a little closer, that sort of thing. So. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, way to go. I love the notion of the spider waiting for the bus too. <laughs> like how many spiders on every bus? So many. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Nikki? Hi, hi. I'll just put my camera around. Um, I did. Uh, my um, cat sitting on my head, quirky bird. 
a ladybird and some hostetary mushrooms, which are New Zealand natives and they're really tiny and they're really blue. They are like Smurfs. So here we go. Whoop, where have we gone to? Nope. There we go. Let me turn this around. Sorry, all those people. So he's going puff, puff, puff. We're upside down. That's upside down. Oh, like Oh, yeah, upside down. Well, that's a terrible way to be, isn't it? There we go. Is that better? There we go. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. Let's try that again. Puff, puff, puff. Oh, that's right. I can fly. I forgot. Wee! Oh. Wee zoom. Oh, I wish I could fly like that. So I kind of followed your prompts, but I could see what to do as you're talking. So yeah, yeah, um, that's great. Love it. I love the like uh, movement of the mushrooms that you've got too. They feel uh, they feel very alive too. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not committed to a box grid for my own practices. I almost never draw a box, but I was trying uh -huh. to do comics type thing. Rad. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. That was fun. Great job, Nikki. Good to see you. Rob, Thanks. can you, can I entice you to come on camera? Yeah. Hi. Um, here. Let me. Uh, there you are. So, well, there there is the um the sequence. Oh, oh yes. Mishka. <laughs> Very cool. And then um. I drew a bee that's singing and a cat that's angry. So it's about. <laughs> that angry cat language is so clear. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Good to see you, Rob. I see Michaela. Hey, this was fun. I have a. Oh, I want to share my initial drawing of the four boxes. Cool. With the worlds, the populated worlds. And then these are the I have two pages. This is the, <laughs> what I drew. Can you read it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to run. I'm vegan now. I'm still cautious. And then the second sequence, I didn't really think about it at all. I just. Yeah, fast and loose. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. It was yeah. fun to do. Love it. I mean, the last panel to me speaks of like an, an extinction, a pre-extinction dance. I don't really know. Yeah, it could be. I was just going in my unconscious. Yeah. So cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, love it. Thanks wow, you all really did a lot in a very short amount of time. Keep on going. Who's who else is there? Thanks for sharing that. We've got Edgar um, and Jamie. I need you guys to come on camera. Uh, and Nikki also off camera. There's Edgar. Yeah, here I am. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and thank you, Eli. Uh, I am. Uh, I uh, thought about what they could think and what uh, one of them might say, but here, here it is. I've got four different creatures, uh, and it's called Their Thoughts Expressed in Song Lyrics. Yes. The, hum the hummingbird is singing uh, a, a modified, oh, hummingbird, we have been waiting for you to come flying along. The hummingbird says... Uh, and this is Owl City Fireflies, and I don't know the song. You would not believe your eyes if 10 million fireflies lit on the world as I fell asleep. Uh, the, uh, the mushroom, though, is actually calling out to each of them. Each of you rest calm on me, rest in a dream. And that's from Rest Calm by Nightwish. And finally, the cat is watching all of them and starts singing, Midnight, and I'm terribly hungry. So anyway, those are those are my uh, little characters. So thank you for this most unusual uh, concept. 
<laughs> oh, what a pleasure. You really took it to the next level. Love the the way that you got the color in there too, making everybody so alive. I know. Well, yeah, thank I think you. maybe you need you need to maybe take your singing comics on tour, Edgar. Yes, I, I, I think I, I think I do. And I'll have to have different voices, <laughs> different singing voices for each one. Love it. So thanks, thanks for the good idea. Oh yeah. Pleasure. Thanks, Edgar. Uh, I see Jamie and Nikki, and I don't see any more hands after that. Hey, okay. Jamie. Hi. Well, um, it's in pencil, so I don't know if you will be able to see it. Uh, I'm not at my best today, but we'll do uh, what we can. Uh, I thought this was funny because I'm, hold on, can we, I got to get Kurt off. off the back. I got to get Kurt off. Yeah. I know. Wait, somewhere it's over here. Damn it. I thought Snake oh, Piston was dead. That. Obra abs. Blur. Here, here we go. Does blur work? No, none. We want none. God <laughs> damn it. I hate, I hate Zoom more than anything. I am praying for the collapse of civilization so I will never have to do this shit again. But in the interest of comic love and the comic workshops, here's me with my, and, and now I can't get this off. Now this thing no, is obscure. Whatever I'm doing. This I this know, but like, I can't see it because I'm going to have to read you my comic and I can't see it because the stupid iPad is just showing me the backgrounds I, I can choose, but I'm choosing not to choose. Okay. Uh, this was like the shit that I drew, like fast and loose, fast and loose. I'm like, I think I hate her. I hate Eli. Fast and loose. I don't want to be fast and loose. But this did amuse me because this is the bug of my nightmares and the mega roach. It survives and it, it it lives in Manhattan no matter where you are. I saw a freaking guy from Australia the other day just stomping on it on the sidewalk. He's like, is that a roach? I, I got to kill it, man. I've got to kill it. And he just like stomped on it. And it, so it, it pervades my dreams. Anyway, and then I tried to do what you said with the uh, with the other guys, but I don't know how we'll do this. So I got an elephant and I got a dog. And the elephant's like, uh, he's thinking, I just ran away from the circus and I'm scared. Also, I have to poop. And then the dog goes, well, I just ran away from home and I'm scared. I'm not scared of anything except lightning. And also it's about to rain. So now I have to poop too. So that's the top one. And then, and then when they talk to each other, he goes, hi, I'm Dumbo and I'm scared. I ran away from the zoo. And I'm, I don't know, I couldn't decide where he came from. Uh, I'm tired of them trying to tie me up and telling me what to do. Also, I have to poop. Also, they call me dumb in my name. And then the dog goes, uh, I have to poo too. And I'm not scared of anything except thunder and lightning. Uh, it's coming, but maybe we can help each other out. So then they're gonna, because the elephant's got the big body. So he's like, thank you. They're thinking it, I guess. And then he's like, well, you're welcome over there. And then they go, but, because you said put a caption in there. But did we forget one thing? Yes, we forgot one thing because they forgot to poop. So then they had to poop and it's like, of course, his is way bigger than his. <laughs> but now they're best friends. And he's like, well, I love my friend. And he's like, I love my new friend too. And that's the end of my comic. So thank you for this. It was really uh, wonderful, even though it started out really rough. And I was here. <laughs> so well, way to go. Thank you. Thank you for pushing through, Jamie. Um, I I know that fast and loose is a hard mode for some people, but Big you know, time. in our restricted time, it's a good way to hopefully just get some nuggets flowing. It seemed like it had that effect. You just drew all of this cool shit, and long live the possibility of putting a speech bubble or a thought bubble out of a poop blob. I mean, you know. <laughs> Let's keep that going. If there's not a more greater human power than that. I don't know what it is. And there's Amazing. so much shit in the world. Yeah, we got, we could make <laughs> it. It's endless. The possibility, the possibilities are endless. Thank you very much. Awesome. You know, this Thanks was, this was uh, amazing. Traditionally, this is when everybody goes off mute just to say hi and thanks. But before we do that, any, any closing thoughts? Yeah. I just want to say thanks to everybody for taking the the leap. I realized that we just barely scratched the surface. If it felt frustrating or like um, not quite enough, I, I hope that's motivational and not an evidence of a poorly planned workshop. Um, but I, I would love to bask in further gnawing on the, I, I just feel like 
humans put themselves, ourselves in the center of everything so often as that it's all, it's all on us to both solve everything that we've screwed up and we're all going, yes, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Ramshackle Enterprises. That's Ramshackle Enterprises, all one long word, two E's right next to each other on Instagram. I'm putting the link to my book in the chat again. Um, I would love to stay in touch with anyone. I, I'd love to draw with other people, be in touch anytime. And if you want to celebrate a horseshoe crab holiday, my book and figure out how we can make a flotilla or dress up as crabs or hold a blood drive or <laughs> any number of other things. Um, thank you all for coming. Thanks to Saw for hosting us and Michael for helping me and Tom for inviting and all of you for digging in. But other than that, no, if anybody wants to say anything or ask any questions, I'm here. Yeah, I do, Eli. This was great and you were perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that's so true. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody can unmute if you want. Say hi. Oh, say thank, hey. you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, thank you. And thanks for sending the God. Happy day. Wonderful. Great. 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 Start to a good Very weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. It was really great. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best medicine ever. <laughs> really good. Thank you. Yeah, keep agitating your first person. This whole notion of first person singular can really get blown out of the water through all of this. Thanks a lot for coming. This was really good, Eli. Also because we recently did some things where we drew ourselves as animals, but we were sort of taking ourselves out of the animals here and letting them, we were sort of visiting their world instead of bringing them into ours. So it had, a, a nice serendipitous contrast oh cool yeah it would be interesting to go to do some deeper longer work going back and forth between what happens if you keep going back and forth between putting them in us and putting us in them yeah 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 and what happens when that starts to blur and where you lose the them separate from us and i think that for me a lot of what comes up is all these questions around like geez do they care what time it is or like, you know, like all of the, all of my concerns suddenly feel so deeply human in a way that I start to start to recognize maybe some other concerns I could be holding in a different closeness if I were less human. It's always useful, I think. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you so much. Good to see everybody. Have a great weekend. Keep making Bye. comics. Bye. Fascinating, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Take care.